Hi, I thought I would show you some of the puzzles that I completed since I started back in October. Once I decided to do this, I just put my puzzles between foam board until I was ready to make this video. However, I've done a lot more puzzles, several more puzzles that are not still assembled. And those include the cat lineup puzzle, which is this one. This one ended up back in the box, but I'll try to include a screenshot. And this is not still assembled because it crumbled almost as soon as I finished putting it together. So I may be able to include those in the screenshot. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. It's a lot of work here, so I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do this video. But I also wanted to talk to you about my channel. Now, I am Robin Loves Reading, been Robin Loves Reading for about four years. And about a year or two ago, I added and all the things to my channel name so that I can incorporate my other crafts. And at some point, I included cross stitching. Sometimes I'll do diamond painting whipping chats, and I've even done a few time lapse videos of jigsaw puzzles and some other like haul videos, etc. But over the last week or so, I've been watching as many YouTube puzzle channels as I can, including one that I've been subscribed to the longest, which is Karen Puzzles. And then there's a lot of newer channels like For the Love of Puzzles or Addicted to Puzzles and, and a few others like Puzzling in Two Countries. And I realized that unless I'm willing to change my location and invest in some better quality equipment, I am not prepared to be a jigsaw puzzle channel and I should probably focus on Robin Loves Reading and all the things. I mean, Robin Loves Reading. And then I thought, well, maybe what I'll do is once a month, I'll show you what I worked on and go we'll see how that goes. Another reason I decided on that is views are not everything, but I have been watching my stats, my analytics, and I've also compared my analytics to other smaller YouTube channels that have the name puzzle in them. Since my channel is Robin Loves Reading and all the things, the YouTube algorithm does not get my puzzle videos in the hands of people who want to see anything related to jigsaw puzzles. So if I should decide down the line to have a jigsaw puzzle channel, or to continue to do jigsaw puzzles on this channel in time lapses and things of that nature and decide that I need a better, stronger tripod, uh, maybe a different puzzle area, as well as, uh, as well as, I'm losing my thought, as well as changing to a separate channel that includes only jigsaw puzzles. Those are all things that I have to think about. But what I don't want to happen in the meantime is for my main livelihood, book reviewing, to get lost in the shuffle. That needs to be first and foremost because that's my, my main thing. But I do love jigsaw puzzles and when I'm not having high pain days, I can assemble a thousand piece puzzle in about a day, you know, including the time it takes to go to sleep at night. Cause usually I will start midday, take a nap, work until I go to bed and then finish it the following day. So I can do jigsaw puzzles in six, seven, eight hours. But if I'm only going to get 15 views or 20 views, all of the work, time and effort, it goes in, that goes into editing the video, creating the time lapse, because I don't have a sophisticated camera. So when I create a time lapse video, I have to condense it, save it, condense it again, save it, and, and repeat that three or four times to get it down to less than five minutes. It's just a lot of work. So let's talk about 
the jigsaw puzzles that I want to show you in this video. Now, I probably should have set myself up to be on camera for the first part of this, so you have to accept my apologies for not being on camera. Just please accept my apologies. So, this is called Kitschy Cute. It's an Amy Stewart jigsaw puzzle. I love Amy Stewart's jigsaw puzzles. They are very detailed and very busy. And what I love about her puzzles is there's no standard sorting like in the trays that I have. And I'll show you the three types of trays that I have. I have this, which is a set of five clear trays. I have three sets of this, six of these, and then eight of these, a set of eight. With Amy Stewart Pixar puzzles, those trays are useless. The most you can do basically is to grab the edge pieces for those that you can find, and then start looking for areas that have similar textures. I have to tell you, I absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, adore these puzzles. And this makes this jigsaw puzzle perhaps my favorite of 2022 so far. Granted, I only started doing jigsaw puzzles again in October, so I don't know what's going to happen in 2023. If I'm going to go back to diamond painting or cross stitching or mix it all up or get back into my miniature, I don't know. But for right now, this is what I am loving and this is what is getting my time and attention along with my reading and book reviewing and blogging. And for the reasons that I mentioned, you won't see a time lapse on this and on a couple of others that I will show you in this video. So without any further ado, let's talk about this puzzle. As mentioned, it's called Kitschy Cute. It's, a, it's an Amy Stewart jigsaw puzzle and it features a poodle. And it has some, uh, lots of toys, puzzles, books, and flowers, and leaves, and it has an outdoor. And the thing about her puzzles is they're all like this in one fashion or another. And I just love them. I don't know what it is about this puzzle that I love so much. But I have to tell you, when I started this puzzle, I started having a really bad backache. I have severe back issues. I've had five back surgeries and truth be told, I am resisting the doctor's advice to have back surgery number six. So there are times that my back goes completely out. Then you factor in that I went into a fibro flare thanks to the damp New England weather and I have a really bad headache. But I couldn't stay away from this puzzle. I would rest a couple of hours on heat work on it a little bit, rest, work, rest, work, and still got it done in a couple of days, despite being in all sorts of pain. So this is the first puzzle I want to show you in this video, and it's the most recent puzzle I've done, and I already know what my next jigsaw puzzle will be. So this is called Kitschy Cute, like I said, by Amy Stewart. Unfortunately, I don't see it on Amazon right now. I bought this about a year ago maybe even two years ago, and I only saw one copy on eBay for $35. But if you can get your hands on this for a reasonable price, it will be a fabulous puzzling experience. And if you're still watching and if you're listening to what I'm saying, and if you like jigsaw puzzles, please tell me in the comments below if you like busy jigsaw puzzles like this. So there you have it, Kitschy Cute by Amy Stewart. This next jigsaw puzzle is Cobble Hill Green from the Cobble Hill Rainbow Series. Now, if you remember the mnemonic uh, Roy G. Biv, red, orange, green, yellow, and so forth and so on, I have done, I think, five of these so far. So uh, this year I have done green and I believe I've done red, but I'll check, I'm pretty sure it's red. So the, these puzzles are very, very satisfying to do. And as you can see, everything here is related to green, whether it's green in English, whether it, it's lucky, if it's frogs, if it's, uh, for some reason, the, the green coin for the uh, UK, turtles, 
the Bobsy twins in the country. It's just a beautiful puzzle. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Green is my favorite color. But I don't like the greens in this puzzle very much. I like a deeper, darker green, but it doesn't take away from the beauty of the puzzle, even though this isn't the type of green that I like. I like this type of green, if you can see it. Um, so I worked with uh, kind of pea green colors that didn't truly appeal to me, but you can't go wrong with these Cobble Hill puzzles. Now, what I like about these Cobble Hill puzzles is it's, a lot of these pieces are random cut. You do have some regular piece shapes, you know, with the two outs and the two ends, but you have some weird piece shapes in here as well. Now, this particular puzzle I have glued together because I have an idea for this series. Okay, this is the first Cobble Hill puzzle that I worked on for 2022. In fact, I started this jigsaw puzzle maybe around March and then put it up for six or seven months and didn't pick it up till the end of September, early October. This is Cobble Hill Red. So I've done Cobble Hill Green this year in Cobble Hill Red. What I have left are Cobble Hill Purple and I can't quite see, Pink. I think I just have Purple and Pink left. Then I have the Element Series, uh, Fire, Water, air and wind and then i also have cobble hill rainbow gradient and cobble hill black and white so i still have quite a few cobble hill jigsaw puzzles but this is cobble hill red now i loved this one i love the vivacity of it i love the brightness of it i love the deep tones of red and i love everything that's connected to the word red in this puzzle just like in the green or the orange and the, or the blue everything or the yellow because that's what i've done red orange green blue and yellow so for this year like i said this is my cobble hill again this one is glued i had mentioned that the green one is glued and this one is glued as well okay this is a 750 piece puzzle from buffalo called puzzler's desk I had two cat puzzles that I did in October that involved jigsaw puzzles. I decided to do these cat puzzles because before I got this bits and pieces puzzle board and I was puzzling flat on this card table here, Milo, one of my cats, made that his resting place on my puzzles next to my puzzles, grabbing puzzle pieces, and so forth and so on. So I have a lot of cat puzzles, but I didn't have too many cat puzzles with puzzle pieces. And that's what I have here. And as you can see, it is perfect. I loved it. This was super easy. I kind of thought it might be a little bit difficult with puzzle pieces within the puzzle itself, but it wasn't. If there was any, any difficulty, it was minor, and it was simply the, uh, the window frame, but that was pretty easy too. Now, would you have kittens on your puzzle table with an open glass of wine? That's my only fault with this puzzle, because I certainly wouldn't. First of all, I don't drink wine. Would you have a piece of cake on your puzzle table with kittens right there? So that's kind of humorous. I love this puzzle because one of the favorite things I had saw in this puzzle was the vase. I loved that, that's sitting in the window. And there's a marble game there. There's a bunch of nice features in this puzzle. You have uh, cards there, you have a jigsaw puzzle book, a beautiful lamp, and three lovely little kittens who are curious. And that, again, is called Puzzler's Desk by Buffalo. Um, I don't know if I can tell you the artist on this one. I'm going to check the box. Sorry for hitting my camera. This does not appear to tell me the artist. Check, uh, I mean, not, oh, this is Steve Reed. Uh, Charles Wysocki started the Cat Puzzle series, but this is by Steve Reed. So we're going to disassemble this puzzle and put it back in the box for my next assembly.
Okay, the next puzzle I am going to show you is called Puzzler's Problem. And before we talk about my experience with the puzzle, um, I want to let you know the author's name is Irina Gamashova Cotton. Okay. Ooh. Sorry. I hit the camera. I'll try to edit that out. So that is the artist. And again, I chose this puzzle because cats are lying on the jigsaw puzzle, which only one of my cats was doing, and his name is Milo. My cat, Toby, might come over and check it out, but he doesn't rest on my puzzles. However, this is what Milo looks like. Yes, Milo is ginger. Toby's also ginger, but Toby has a lot of white, like this cat has some white, whereas Milo has 99.9% orangey ginger color so i love that i don't have a gray and white tabby but th these are the two cats one thing i love about this puzzle is toby the one that doesn't get on my jigsaw puzzles is a chunkster he's a big boy so seeing a big cat like this was kind of cute milo's a little bit slimmer than toby but Milo is the inspiration behind me picking up this puzzle to do now this is again it's called puzzling problem and the features on this is a puzzle box with an, op an open puzzle box with pieces inside and pieces on the table you have a ball of yarn some ribbon some snacks up here again an open drink I would not have an open drink where my cats are present never mind on a jigsaw puzzle and you know what else I just noticed I noticed that there's a foot over here so is, was this supposed to be a third cat in the puzzle? I have no idea. Because it looks like there's a foot here. I'm not even sure what that's all about. But anyway, this is called Puzzling Problems. A 750-piece buffalo puzzle. I enjoyed it. Just a few hours. Quick, quick, quick. These 750-piece pu puzzles don't take too long. But I like to do them after doing a... Especially after doing a collage puzzle or now that I'm trying to do uh, gradient puzzles, I do like to step back and work on an easier puzzle. So that is this one and we are going to disassemble it. Okay, here is my first gradient puzzle by Buffalo Puzzles called Puzzle. Is it called Gradient Challenge? Let me get the box. It's called Color Challenge. Okay, now I had some problems with this puzzle. The first problem we'll talk about is can you see the peeling pieces? I've taped a few of them down, or glued a few down in a few spots. But as soon as I glue one piece down, I see that it peels up in other places. I don't notice this a lot with Buffalo Puzzles, but I noticed it with this one. My other problem with this is it's my very first gradient puzzle. And I chose to do my first gradient puzzle as a thousand piece puzzle. Having no experience with gradient puzzles and watching Karen puzzles on her channel, I thought, oh, this is going to be a breeze. Well, it wasn't a breeze. It only took a day, like, as I mentioned in earlier in this video, I, I puzzle, nap, go to bed, puzzle until I finish. So I, I don't usually puzzle all in one sitting. So it still took about a day, but I found this to be difficult because, okay, like we'll go here. You see how you've got the yellow right here? And then you go to orange, but then you go back to yellow and you got yellow over here and you even got a little bit of yellow there. So the gradients were very hard to follow. Then we have the fact that I am legally blind and I have glaucoma, so it was really hard to do. I don't have good color sense. I don't. Doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing gradient puzzles. By no means am I going to stop. I'm just not going to worry about how much time is ticking away on the clock. So... Again, my only two problems was choosing a large puzzle for my first gradient and the peeling back of some of the pieces. But other than that, I love it. 
but I am glad to be putting it back in the box. I won't be redoing this puzzle mainly because of the peeling up of the pieces. Now, I might might have wanted to do it again to challenge myself for a better time, but I won't do it again because I don't like the peeling up of the pieces. So, last thing I'll say, reiterate, I do tons of buffalo puzzles. This does not always happen. It doesn't happen often, but for some reason it happened with this puzzle. So let's I am going to show you is Buffalo's Vivid. It's called Vivid Collection Up, Up, and Away. It's one of their balloon puzzles. I found that these balloon puzzles are very, very, very popular. They come in all shapes and sizes from 300 pieces up to 2,000 pieces um, with more balloons, with less balloons, but this is the one that I bought a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, it was missing a piece, but you know, I can live with that, it happens. But I loved this puzzle. This was not a puzzle that I could really work on with the uh, poster or the box. This was more of going through the pieces and just trying to grab whatever purples I could, for example, grab whatever blues or these, this gold or the sky. You have the pink sky, the blue sky, and the yellow and the orange sky, and then the bottom down here. Despite the challenge, I loved this puzzle. And yes, I probably will get another balloon puzzle as time goes on, because like I said, they, there's so many of them out there, but this was really, really great. And like I said, sadly, it was missing a piece, but I loved it nonetheless. Again, it's called Up, Up and Away from the Vivid Collection by Buffalo Games. Okay, one of my favorite puzzles that I have assembled in the last couple of weeks is this blue kazoo puzzle called Triangles. Now, as you can see, it's a gradient puzzle. And if I, depending on which order I put these videos together, you will see that I did the color challenge, color challenge puzzle by Buffalo, which I found to be very difficult. This was very easy. Why? you have very clear distinctions of color, very clear. So this took maybe five and a half hours. I love this one. I saw one little spot where it peeled up, just one little spot. Very, very, very well, beautiful quality. It didn't hold up well to the pickup test, however, but I love it. I love Blue Kazoo. I have one more of their puzzles. And once I get a little bit more confidence, maybe I will buy one of their Earth or Moon or Galaxy puzzles. I don't know if I can do those, but they have quality puzzles. I really enjoyed this one. I loved that I didn't let the less than pleasurable experience I had with the Buffalo Gradient to dissuade me from doing this. Because even before I did the Buffalo Gradient, I had ordered this. And I'm so glad I went and did it because I loved it. I loved it. I loved that gradient puzzles are different and I want to try to start buying. I do have a lot of different gradient puzzles, maybe eight or nine other ones, but there are some brands for the original gradient puzzles that I'd like to get. And one of these days I'm going to get a crypt puzzle, but no time soon. So again, this is Blue Kazoo Triangle. I got it on their website. They had a deal where you get three puzzles for 20% off. 
but at, one was I think the moon or the earth and I didn't want that one at this point so I just got two but I got 15% off so I thought I got a pretty good deal so there you have it Okay, this is from the Collector's Cupboard, which is Curious Cupboard Number 6 by Colin Thompson. I love these puzzles. This may only be about the fifth one of his that I have done, but give me enough time and I will collect all of them. Now, what I love about this puzzle is there are cats everywhere everywhere there are cats i should have counted them but i'm not going to and maybe when i reassemble this puzzle in the future i will count how many cats there are but if you saw my amy stewart puzzle with the collage type images that's exactly what you have here with colin thompson's puzzles i i just can't say enough about these type of puzzles they are so fun to work on you can't really sort, you know, you can look for these, this green here or this strip of words here or that little bit of red there or that gray truck, but really you just have to use your eyes to track what's in the box or what's in your trays. And it's not even worth it to sort them by piece shape because you, you're looking for matching pieces. And I love it. I just love, 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 love this puzzle. It's, it's hard for me to say right now if I like Colin Thompson more or Amy Stewart more. So let's just say right now I love them equally for these collage type puzzles. And there you have it. Collector's Cupboard number six, was it? No, Curious Cupboard number six. Okay, this is my first mystery puzzle, which is Murder in Little Piddling. I did do a series on this channel, but it didn't go anywhere, so I didn't even bother to solve it. But I'm pretty sure that this kid was the killer because in the finished puzzle, there it is there is a can of oil by his window. Everybody else has a great alibi and this kid said, I was in my room. I can't even sneak out of my room because my window's glued shut or stuck, but he had a can of oil right there. So I kind of think he's the killer, but I haven't even read the, went back to the booklet to see. But this was, a, like I said, my first mystery puzzle. I am going to get the others in this series. This is from White Mountain. It's 1,000 pieces, but these are bigger piece sizes. So it really comes out to the size of a standard 1,500 piece puzzle, even though it's only 1,000 pieces. I also got an Agatha Christie murder mystery and another one that is similar to Agatha Christie, but with a name that's similar to one of the titles in her books, but it's not quite hers. Um, um, do, 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 do. I don't see it right off the top of my head, so I can't show you, but I want to do as many of these murder mystery puzzles as I can because they're fun to work on while you're doing a puzzle that's different from the box and while you're reading clues while you're working on the puzzle and while you work on solving the puzzle. And I read enough murder mysteries that I think little Col young Colin is indeed the killer. And one of these days I'll get the booklet out and look at the answer. But this, like I said, is my first murder mystery puzzle. And if I didn't say it already, which I think I did, it's from White Mountain.
Okay, I decided to look at this. Sorry for the spoiler, but yes, Colin was the killer. That little can of oil by his window told me that. So that was my assumption on that one. Okay, this next puzzle is from Buffalo and it is in the Country Life series and it's called Country Delivery. I have three puzzles in this series and I will eventually collect all of them. I really, really love this puzzle. And I'm looking at the box to see if there's an artist's name. Sometimes there is and sometimes there is not. So I don't see, an, oh, wait a minute, Edward. Edward is the artist. Now, I chose this puzzle because of the beauty of it. And I don't know what it is I liked about it, but I thought it would be kind of an easy puzzle. Yes, it's a 1,000 piece puzzle, which is my standard puzzle size, by the way. But I thought it would be an easy puzzle to work on, and it was. Only a little bit of Sky, which, by the way, contrary to a lot of people, Sky is my favorite part of the puzzle. But there was a little Sky, there was a lot of words. United States Post Office, Post Office here, Postal Post, Mail, Flowers, Coffee Shop, Post is here a couple of times. You have two trucks with different tires and different grills, and then you have the fall trees on the side. And because I have three of these puzzles and I saw fall leaves, I thought, yeah, let's do this one. And I am going to go on Amazon and throw them all in my wish list, the ones that I don't have, because these puzzles are pure joy. They're beautiful, they're simple, but they're absolutely lovely. Buffalo is one of my favorite brands at this point. Why do I say at this point? Well, when I was doing jigsaw puzzles back in 2020, I basically bought Buffalo, White Mountain, and Ravensburger. I did buy some Anatolian and yeah, Anatolian seems to be the only other brand that I bought. But now that I'm watching a lot of puzzle channels on YouTube, I'm seeing Ibu and uh, Blue Kazoo and Springbok and hordes of lots of other puzzle companies. Sorry for that siren, I can't control that. And so I will be branching out in other puzzle companies. And my first branching out in other puzzle companies was Schmidt and Blue Kazoo. Blue Kazoo, I've already done one of those puzzles. And Schmidt is going to be one of my next puzzles. Not my very next puzzle, but it is coming up. And I also have a couple of Bregramians puzzles that I want to do, which I haven't done either of these yet but I have two of these whoops I have two of these so that's another brand that I want to do I have a couple of bits and pieces and it looks like I have some oh, what is that brand I am drawing a blank oh I have a couple of Gallison puzzles and the last brand I want to mention is your graphics so there are other brands that I have but I just mainly have Buffalo, White Mountain, and Ravensburger. But I just love this puzzle, and I kind of almost hate to break it apart, but there's just too many puzzles and too many diamond paintings already hanging up in my apartment. I mean, how much space can one person utilize before they run out of wall space? So I'm going to take this baby apart. Okay, just two more puzzles to show you. These are Prime 3D puzzles from Puzzler.com, and the artist here is Bob Giordano. I believe this one is called uh, Naughty Bedroom Kittens, if I'm not mistaken. And as you can see, there's more than a dozen kittens in this post in this puzzle. Now, this is a 3D puzzle which I have shown on this channel, and 
you can kind of see the 3D effect and how easy it is to pick up too. And I love this puzzle. I'm not ready to take this or the other one that I'm going to show you apart. I just think they're absolutely beautiful puzzles and I, I don't know what to do with them, but I'm not taking them apart. I'm gonna keep the camera running while I get the other one. I can literally just pick it up and bring it over. I don't have to do anything fancy with the foam board. Just fix that little part. Yes, I hit the camera and I know that. So let's just put it right on top of there. So this is the other one that I've done. And this one is called Great White Shark. Again, it's a prime 3D puzzle. puzzle and it's from the company that sold it is Puzzler.com. I am now an affiliate for them. And I'm telling you, these puzzles are gorgeous. Let me see if you can see the 3D effect if you haven't already seen the videos on this. Can you see that at all? Yes, they are truly 3D. I think the pieces are acrylic, if I'm not mistaken. And um, just fixing two pieces that came up, but I'm not worried about that. I think the pieces are acrylic because that's not really even plastic on this side. In this, can you hear that? It's it's a really cool material. And I did look up Prime 3D puzzles and they were out a few years ago by a different uh, distributor, but now Puzzler 3D has them and we, we have Marvel, we have, oh goodness, I'm always forgetting the other competing company, but you have Marvel, Disney, you have dinosaurs, you have cats, you have dogs, you have solar system and countless others in their 3d puzzles i just love these puzzles like i said i'm, I'm just going to stick them back between the foam board i don't know what i'm going to do with them if i'm going to hang them i do know this that if i am going to hang them i will tape them from the back i won't put anything on the front because i don't want to damage the 3d effect in any way but I'll, I'll decide that down the road. But that is all of the puzzles here. And I will put these back with the other ones that I'm keeping bound. And I actually, I'm going to come back in a second and tell you about the ones that are still not together. Okay, there are five more puzzles that I have not shown you because I had already put them back in the boxes before I decided to go ahead and make this type of video. In no particular order, but I will kind of tell you around the time I did them, and I'm going to try to avoid the glare. I'm going to see if we can move. Oh, it makes the glare. Okay, if I hold it back like this, you can I can avoid the glare. So anyway, let's talk about this puzzle. This is called Evening Tea and Tales. It's another cat jigsaw puzzle, the third one that I did during the course of the video here. All these cat jigsaw puzzles are 750 pieces each. And I have at least a dozen of them, maybe more. And I just got two in the mail. One yesterday and one that literally just came in. I don't see it right off, but I do have quite a few of these puzzles. I loved this puzzle. This was one of the early ones I did when I resumed doing jigsaw puzzles. I started around the 15th or the 16th of October and it is now November 16th so or 17th whatever today's date is. So I have been doing puzzles day after day after day and this is one of the cat puzzles that I chose. Now I am going to bring it up to the screen so that you can see the details and I know I'm blocking my face but I'm trying to avoid the glare. Now I wanted to show you this a little bit closer because if you like this as a jigsaw puzzle but you're not if you like this image but you're not into jigsaw puzzles never fear because Diamond Art Club is producing this as a diamond painting which will be on sale on Saturday. So you have two choices, jigsaw puzzle or diamond painting of this image. And the artist for this image is um, Bridget Ashwood. And there you have it, Buffalo Games, one of the cat puzzles. Now, Charles Wysocki is a diehard favorite of mine. Diehard favorite. I have 15 or so of his puzzles. And this one is called the Bostonian. Whenever I can, I try to buy anything related to Boston, New England, Massachusetts, Cape Cod, 
And this is one of those that I chose because of the name. But I also chose this one because of the name of the puzzle artist, Charles Waisaki. And uh, let me tell you, his puzzles are glorious. I love them and I love this puzzle. I loved a lot about this puzzle, like the yellow was easy to do. There was a lot of words that were easy to do. A little bit of sky, not much, and a couple of trees. And it was just a typical Waisaki puzzle, which meant it was really, really enjoyable if you know anything about his art. I also did this one, Doddle's Three Little Pigs. Now my intent for this was to save this and to show you this in its completed fashion, but I couldn't do that because it was so crumbly. This Doddle puzzle was so crumbly that when I went to move it uh, around on the uh, foam board, it just started falling apart in my hands. And I started rebuilding it and I'm thinking, no, I don't have time. I have something else I wanna work on. So I just put it back in the box and I'm just showing it to you now. Now, when I started Jigsaw Puzzling again, I first finished Red from the Cobble Hill series. This was the very next one I did even before I did that cat puzzle I just showed you. And this is Harbor Evening. Now, this puzzle appealed to me for three reasons. One, it's White Mountain, which is larger piece sizes. Even though it's 1,000, it is the circumference, or it is the, the size of a 1,500 piece puzzle. Number two is it's a fall based puzzle. And number three, it's Harbor, New England. So all of these reasons, I love this puzzle. A little bit of sky, lots of trees, some water, very easy to do, very, very pleasant, enjoyable image to work on. The last puzzle I'll show you at this point is called Cat Lineup by Sun Sout. And I loved this puzzle, but I did have a little bit of a challenge because three of the cats are mostly black other than dealing with a lot of black parts of the puzzle it was a fairly easy puzzle to put together now i love this puzzle because of the ginger cat in front which i do have a ginger cat laying right next to me and i also love this puzzle because it was my first panoramic puzzle and it was also my first sun sound puzzle so there was a lot of good reasons for me to enjoy doing this puzzle now I think what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to just go in and throw in screenshots of each of these as they were completed so that you can kind of see them filling up the whole screen. So. So, other than that, I was kind of hoping I could show you my new, I, I, I put things down so quickly, but these are my two new cat puzzles. I did find them right away. This one here, this was a gift, a smile gift from a group that sends out puzzles just because they're nice. And it's a cat puzzle. So they must be paying attention to my uploads because this is right up my alley. And then this puzzle here, somebody was selling it on a Facebook group. And since I love the Cats of Charles Wysocki jigsaw puzzles and don't have this or did not have this, I was able to buy this secondhand. And I do see that the box, actually the box is sealed. No, it's taped. So it, it was secondhand. But she guarantees that all the pieces are here. So this is the Cats of Charles Wysocki. And this one is called Ethel the Gourmet. At some point, I am going to take pictures of groups of puzzles like my uh, Cats puzzles, my Amy Stewart puzzles, my Colin Thompson puzzles, and my Cobble Hill puzzles. I think I will take individual picture, uh, videos of each of those puzzles. But I just wanted to show you these two because one came yesterday, one came today, and now that adds even more to my stash. Alrighty, thank you for watching.